Hey gang, it's the end of the year, taking things a bit easy right now. One of my viewers sent me to his site to check out a list of questions he had for other non-believers. Figured it'd be a nice way to close out 2018. Let's take a look. So without any delay, here are 10 questions for atheists from an atheist. What religion were you once a part of, and what compelled you to first question its validity? I was never really part of a religion, per se. My immediate family never went to church or anything like that. However, growing up, I was inundated with Christian beliefs and claims with no one really refuting them. I had friends who went to church, I started the school day with the Lord's Prayer and Bible readings, and there were religious cartoons on all the time. I accepted there was a God because everybody else seemed to accept it. Hey, I was a kid, what did I know? If everybody around you appears to take something for granted, particularly people in authority, why would you question them? Especially if you're a child. So, even though I never went to church, I was under the impression that there was a God out there. Then, one night I was in bed thinking about the Moses story and how unlikely that was. Yeah, those should have been a tip-off for me as well, but he wanted to know my thoughts and that's what did it for me. Anyway, that's what got me to start questioning things. What finally convinced you that you were an atheist? Well, as I said, I started questioning the acceptance of the Judeo-Christian claims, but I figured there must be something out there, right? Then in university, for my degree I had to take some religious studies courses. So I studied everything from the Western Abrahamic beliefs to the Eastern religious beliefs. Studying them all at the same time made me realize that no religions really have any evidence to back them up so there really isn't any reason to accept any of them, especially their claims about deities. How have you been treated by your family and others after you became an atheist? My immediate family treats me with unbridled indifference regarding my lack of beliefs, because they're the same. During the winter break, right after those religious classes I mentioned, when I flew back home to visit my family, I asked them, hey, what do we believe? Which in retrospect is an odd question. You really can't ask somebody else what your beliefs are, but it does reinforce the idea that religion is often a familial and social connection as well. And their response was, well, we don't. They just never brought it up, so I had, wrongly, assumed that they believed just like everybody else. I do have other family members who are religious, but it's never really an issue. But then again, we're Canadian, so we're polite about everything. Are you open to religion? And what sort of evidence would one need for you to subscribe to it? I'm open to the idea that I could be wrong. If evidence could be produced to convince me, I will try to be intellectually honest, admit I was wrong, and accept where that evidence takes me. Such evidence would have to be something testable and repeatable. Whoever was trying to convince me would need to define what their claims were, then be able to support those claims. For instance, if a religion claimed that their deity answers prayers and has the ability to heal people, we could try something like the prayer experiment, where sick people are prayed for and you check the results if the recipient of those prayers healed at a better or faster rate. Please note that the failure of such an experiment would not disprove the existence of a god, it would simply mean that the claims of one who matched the one described doesn't exist. Once we define the characteristics of a deity, then we can see if those characteristics are testable. Would you date or marry someone who was religious? Do you have religious friends? Having a disagreement about religious beliefs can make a relationship more difficult, but I don't think it'll be impossible. My ex was a practicing Wiccan. Out of the many, many, many issues our relationship had, our disagreement about spiritual things was, surprisingly, not one of them. She would have her beliefs and I would have my lack of any. I'm glad that my wife now doesn't have any religious beliefs, but I would still love her if we disagreed on how the universe was created. And while it's not the same as your question, we do disagree on some aspects of the supernatural. What is your favorite religion or mythology if you have one, and why? I don't know about favorite. There have been many religions that are producing incredible pieces of art, thought, charity and philosophy that is permeated into the secular world. But in the end, they still base themselves on unproven premises, so I can't say I've got a favorite. Gun to my head, 
If I had to join a religion, the Unitarians appear fairly open and accepting, which seems pretty cool. On the other hand, if you become Catholic, you get free wine once a week, which is a bonus. What gives your life meaning? The other people around me. My friends and family mean a lot to me. Being there for them, supporting them as I know they would support me, makes my life a lot better than if I only cared about myself. What should the goal of humankind be? A lot of people will say things like increasing our scientific knowledge or expanding our sphere of influence of our race beyond the planet and into the rest of the universe. And those are good things. I agree they're important goals, but, and this is going to come off as corny, but love. Find someone who loves you and you love back and hold on to that. Somebody who you make happy and wants to make you happy. Humanity can do great things, but if we're doing it alone, what's the point? Our lives are so much better to be lived and shared with other humans. Shared pain is lessened and shared joy increases. We need to bring more love into the world. Now, if I could choose two goals for humanity, first off, the love thing. Second, humanity should really focus its efforts on making more of those Transformers movies. They definitely aren't piles of loud garbage and exercise in putting spectacle over any kind of coherent writing and ruining both. I mean, they somehow made giant robots fighting each other and demolishing cities in the process into something boring. Ugh. At some point in the series, somebody had to think, wow, the sheer unbridled charisma of Shia LaBeouf is dragging away from the massive destruction on screen. That's got to be the only reason people are nodding off through these explosion-filled finales. Let's replace him with one of the funky bunch. And for some reason, they needed to make sure a character carried around and showed the audience a laminated card detailing why he was allowed to have sex with the minor. Yes, I guess the argument that he was carrying around that card to, I don't know, keep the father of the underage daughter who he was pounding it out with from killing him, but the writers chose to make the ages of those two characters what they were. So as far as I can see, the only intent for that scene was to hide the fact that there's a law out there that lets you bang underage minors. I was high as balls during the last one I watched, and I still couldn't make it through that onslaught to my senses and intelligence. Are you saying I had to be stone cold sober to understand those intricate David Mamet-esque plots? I mean, at one point, the human kid dies but goes to robot heaven? Also, there's a robot heaven? Do machines have souls in this universe? Are there separate heavens for humans and robots? Do only machines go to heaven and this guy is the first human to make it? It just raises so many questions about the metaphysics of this universe. What's next? They start making origin stories of the characters who don't even have any lines? Ugh. You know what, humanity? Just focus on loving each other. Do you believe in the paranormal or any sort of mystical realm? No, I personally don't, but that doesn't mean everybody who doesn't believe in a deity doesn't believe in the paranormal either. To get off on a bit of a tangent, and this is more my philosophical view, but if anything exists, even something we would regard as supernatural, it would be part of the natural world. For example, say it was discovered that ghosts do exist. That would mean they were part of the natural world even if we didn't understand them and had to redefine our understanding of the universe to accommodate this new knowledge. If you could recommend one single book to a religious person, what would it be and why? Single book? I don't know. If I was recommending books, the works of Terry Pratchett come to mind. Not because of their stance on the absurdity of religion, which they are full of, but because they're just really good to read and I recommend them to everybody. Anyway, those are my responses. Hope they explained my mindset a little bit. Happy New Year, everybody.